In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to install Microsoft Windows 10 in secure operating system after the installation. We will cover how to install Windows 10 and how to secure operating system after the installation. We'll do Windows updates, we'll turn on BitLocker, we will create a backup administrative account, create recovery USB drive, and batch install necessary Windows software. If you already know some of the material, make sure to check table of content in the description of this video to jump to the specific section. The easiest way to install Windows is to boot from the Windows installation media. This could be Windows installer DVD or USB drive. Once you successfully boot, you just need to go through the steps in the wizard. You click Next, selecting default settings, and here you click Install Now. I'm not going to enter product key, and I'm going to select an option I don't have a product key to trigger trial installation of Windows. And I'm going to select Windows 10 Education X64. I'm going to accept terms and conditions for the license terms and click Next. I'm going to pick a custom installation, and this is the unallocated drive space that I have. I'm going to select it and click Next. We'll pick United States as a region and click Yes. I'm going to put a mute for the voice control and then click uh, US on the keyboard layout. Um, I'm not going to add second keyboard layout, so I'm going to click Skip. We are not going to create a new Microsoft account uh, and instead going to choose an option uh, Domain Join instead. We'll click uh, to create an account here and I'll call this account Windows Admin and click Next. I'll choose a password. Click Next. I'll confirm the password. Click Next. Set up security questions. You can make Cartana personal assistant, so I'll click Accept. I'll choose No here. I'll choose Default Privacy Settings. In this section, we're going to complete Windows 10 post-installation steps. First thing to do after you completed the installation is to check for updates. To do that, you click on the Start button, type Check for Updates, and click Check for Updates button. Windows is going to check for all the updates required and is going to download and install all required updates since your main downloaded ISO file release of Windows until current date. We will click on Restart button to complete Windows Restart. Now we're going to set up BitLocker encryption on your Windows drive. To do that, you will click Start button Click BitLocker.
and we'll click turn on BitLocker. If you will get the same message as I did, you would need to open a group policy. Navigate to computer configuration, administrative templates, Windows components, BitLocker drive encryption, and check operating system drives. And here you would need to check require additional authentication at startup. Double click on this and click enabled. And make sure this allow BitLocker without compatible TPM is checked. And then click OK. And we'll do it again. And we would need to configure password for BitLocker Secure Boot. Click Next. I am going to save the key to the USB drive, E. Click Next. And I'm going to choose an option to encrypt entire drive for the better protection. And I'm going to choose new encryption mode. And we'll run BitLocker system check before encrypting. And I'm going to restart the computer to trigger the BitLocker encryption process. Now, when I attempt to restart, BitLocker asks me to enter the password. So this is the same password as I set up for BitLocker encryption process. And once we log in, BitLocker encryption is complete. So we're going to check BitLocker encryption by typing Manage BitLocker. And here we can uh, back up recovery key again if we need to choose another drive. We can change the password, remove password, and we can turn off BitLocker. Another important step after Windows installation is complete is to create backup user accounts. So we need administrative accounts to get back in case our account no longer works. To do that, you go to and click on the Start button, right mouse click, and then go to Computer Management. That's one of the Windows tools uh, to manage the computer, as the name uh, implies. And then here, there's a local users and groups. And typically, backup account is good as a um, you know local account, not Microsoft online account. And uh, here, we have uh, VMware Administrator as one of the accounts we've created. And I'm just going to right mouse click click new user and create a backup account we'll call it a backup admin um, and then another backup admin choose the password <laughs> and then we're not gonna ask user to change password in the next logon instead we're gonna say password never expires and then we'll click create by default, um, Windows creates account of the type of user. So instead, what we're going to do, we're going to go in uh, multiple ways to do it. We can go to account properties and say member of, and then just add administrators. And then check names. Uh, administrator is the local um, administrator group. So once we add account to that group, account becomes administrative account. Um, and then we'll click OK. Another way to do it would be go to the groups and just click on the group itself, administrators, and just click add here and it will add the account. So these are the administrator accounts, uh, members of administrators group, but administrator account by default is disabled. 
Uh, so we only have two administrative accounts, VMware Administrator and then Backup Admin. Another thing to do is to create recovery drive. This is helpful when you need to recover, something happens to your PC. So what you do is type recovery uh, and then it goes to recovery, application to control panel. And then we click create recovery drive, click yes. And then uh, we go and set up recovery drive. We'll pick one of the drives, USB drive. Um, which I have as a 16 gigabyte drive and click next. There's a confirmation that everything will be deleted and I confirm that that's the case. And in this step, Windows is creating a USB recovery drive. Once it's done, we'll go to Windows Explorer and check the content of the drive. But basically this is where information will be stored and this is where you would need to be booting from if something happens to your main installation of Microsoft Windows. We'll click finish here and let's go and check the drive itself. So this is a recovery e drive and this is a bootable drive. And all the files are in here. So what you need to do in case of recovery, you need to boot from this drive and follow the steps. In this step, we're going to install frequently used Windows software, specifically open source software or software that's distributed freely. I go to the site. Obviously, you can go to uh, any place uh, and individually download packages, but I go to the site called ninite.com and all links are in the description of this video, so make sure to check it out. Um, but here you can select uh, different uh, packages uh, that's available and specifically I'm interested in browsers uh, instead of going to each individual sites they maintain packages and help you deploy and you can also select and uh, install in batch a lot of different uh, software packages maybe if you don't use um, if you need for example PDF readers or PDF creators they available here messaging apps security uh, apps and then some developer tools. I like the Notepad++ editor. Then VLC Media Player, also very good. I definitely recommend that for compression, 7-zip. So um, I'm going to be selecting uh, those applications. And then Runtime, if you need uh, latest Java Runtime, you can also download and get it from here. And some clients for Evernote, uh, that's also helpful if you're using the tool and a lot of uh, other tools based on your selection. Once you've selected everything that you need, uh, you go to uh, get your Ninite. And uh, I click run. I trust this site. Uh, it prompts me again and uh, goes through the installation process. And now installation is complete. We're going to click close here. And if we go to the start menu and, for example, type Firefox, uh, Firefox is available. That's my favorite browser that I use. Um, and then Chrome should also be available. You might want to consider pinning it to ta taskbar. So I uh, did a right mouse click and selected pin to taskbar. Uh, and another way to do it is just to go and look at all the apps and you see recently added applications and if you scroll down you see recently added applications you, you can expand and you will see all recently added applications uh, that we've just uh, selected and downloaded if you like the content please make sure to click the like button and share with your friends also there's tons of information in the description of this video make sure to check it out make sure to check out my other relevant videos and subscribe to my youtube channel we have a lot of great stuff planned in the pipeline and i don't want you to miss any of it and if you'd like to get notified about all the new stuff that are coming out, make sure to subscribe to my email list as well. All links are here on the screen. Make sure to click to stay in touch. Thanks again for watching.